And remember, we are all leaders in some shape or form. We are all aspiring leaders. During the last nine weeks, we taught you the steps that should be taken on your journey to retirement. We brought the steps out in the Dave Ramsey steps. We shifted some things and we expounded on others and we added and we built and but he gave you the steps to retirement in the last nine classes. This is class number 10. Next week will be graduation. I say the steps to retirement because on the day you're born, that's where you start heading. You're headed to retirement. I want you to envision yourself climbing the love life. The, you learn to talk, you learn to walk, you go to elementary school, you do all you have to do, you go to high school, you get your first job, you start saving money, you get married, you have a family, and you're climbing the hill of life. And then you get to the summit, or the peak, or the hilltop, whatever you want to call it. And when you get to the top of the hill, you start with this set. Things start slowing down. Yeah, I'm in my descent. If Jesus carries, if he does not see fit to call you home, you will continue your descent. At the foot of the hill is a place called retirement. Whether you want to or not, if you're alive, you'll arrive at retirement. The question is, then what? If you have not followed the steps that we taught you, you arrive at retirement, then what? You have no retirement savings. Because while you were climbing, you were not saving. You have no insurance. Documents? What are you talking about? You have no documents in place. My Lord. So today, we will touch on insurance and documents in this class. You will not find the word insurance in the Bible because it's not in there. But the Bible talks about future provision. And all insurance is, is providing for the future. See, the last time I checked, nobody can buy an insurance policy to cover them for last month or the month before last year. Right. So you buy an insurance policy to cover you going forward. You might buy today, something happens tomorrow, but tomorrow is future. Five minutes from now is future. So the Bible talks about future provision. Some individuals consider buying insurance as a lack of faith. Some people say, has anyone ever make a comment, made a comment to you? Just trust God, you do. So trust God. You do no savings, you do nothing because you're trusting in God. Well, it's not enough to trust in God. You need to do the work. That's a lame excuse, that's empty advice. Just trust God and go on living. Empty advice. One of the foundational elements of good stewardship, remember in this class, the first class, we said we're stewards, and a steward is simply a manager. And one of the foundational elements of being a good steward is being prepared for the unexpected. The Bible says time and chance will happen to us all, not just this side of the class, not just me. All of us will experience time and chance. That's what the word of God says. We are not inoculated because we're children of the most high God. We are not inoculated against time and chance. Sickness will come upon us. Accidents will happen. Disasters will come upon us. These things will happen. The word of God says when we go through, he didn't say over, above, around. When we go through, he'll be with us. But these things will happen to us. And when they happen to us, then what? Oh, woe is me. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. Read these scriptures when you go out from here. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. It says, time and chance happens to them all. Not some. All time and chance. Time and chance refers to unfavorable, undesirable conditions. Something you don't want. Who wants to be sick? Unfavorable, undesirable. Who wants to have an accident? We don't want these things to happen. When we believe that time and chance will occur because God's word says so, then we need to ask ourselves, what is the best way to not leave things to chance? What is the best way for me to not leave myself to chance if I fall in the hospital, I have no insurance? And as I mentioned in the first class, it's just a, a, a saying. They say you show up at the ER, the first question they're gonna ask, what insurance do you have? Yeah. Oh, I have none. They're going around the corner and leave you there to bleed out because you have no insurance. So time and chance will happen to them all, Ecclesiastes 9 and 12. God wants us to be prudent stewards who will use every means available to protect that which he has placed in our care. That's what God wants us to do. Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 12. Proverbs 27, 12 says, A prudent man foresees evil and hides himself. If I'm smart enough, I will know that I can get sick. That's evil. I'll hide myself by having insurance. If I'm smart enough, I can know that I don't know when my number is going to be called. I can die. I'll cover my family by having some insurance if we're smart. And which is not in my notes, but I always think of the verse that says, look to the ant, thou sluggard. Now let's think about an ant. Think about the size of an ant. Think about the brain of an ant compared to our brain. And the word of God says in that scripture, the ant has no overseer, no ruler, no guide. Yet the ant provides her food in the summer, her meat in the harvest. If we get a little paycheck, we go off to the moor. Think about the ant. We have a ruler. We have an overseer. We have a guide. His name is Jesus. And what do we do? Scripture. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. 1 Timothy 5 and 8. But if any provides not for his own, if you're not providing for your household, the word of God goes on to say he's worse than an infidel. And an infidel is somebody who doesn't know God. That's what the word of God says. If you're not providing for your household. I like this one. Ecclesiastes chapter 6 and verse 3. And Ecclesiastes chapter 6 and verse 3 says, and I'll paraphrase that one. If a man lives a hundred years. So many of you. Oh, you used to put up the hill. If a man lives 100 years and has many children. And he does not even have the proper burial. One translation says, better than stillborn. Another translation says, better than miscarriage. The word of God is saying, if you came here, you did nothing, you don't even have a proper burial. What's the point? See, because the word of God says, and this is not in my notes, I know the plans that I have for you. So God has plans for us. And we're going to arrive at the foot of the hill with nothing. So what's the point? Proverbs 13, verse 22 says, A good man leaves an inheritance not only for his children, but his children's children. Oh. And which again is not in my notes. When I thought about this, I thought about the, the, the <clears throat> message that was preached recently about the Samaritan woman. Jacob's well. Mm -hmm. When the Lord gave me the dog, she was at Jacob's well. She was a Samaritan. He was a Jew. She was benefiting from Jacob's well. He left an inheritance. Mm -hmm. Break that down. So we got to leave an inheritance. And I want to differentiate between an inheritance and a legacy. Don't get them mixed up. A legacy is not tangible. I'm teaching. This is a legacy. Somebody will take this legacy and run when I'm born. So a legacy is things that are not tangible. We teach the children. 
We set examples. That's a legacy. An inheritance is tangible. Give me the money. That's an inheritance. I'll take your money. So inheritance is tangible. Legacy is not tangible. Don't get mixed up with them. So getting back to insurance, the first one I'm going to pick on, again, the word of God says, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's. And Caesar, the law of this land, said so we need to have automobile insurance. <coughs> Yet there are times I've known, I've heard stories of people would say, okay, church is only a block away, I'll take the car. You don't even have liability insurance. Mm -hmm. When you try to make it to church, a block away, then you have an accident. Mm -hmm. We have liability insurance. We have collision. We have comprehensive. I am not going to get into details. The law of the land says you have to have at least liability. So even if you don't care about your car, let's fix the other person's vehicle. So we have to have insurance future provision, providing for the accident before it occurs. Health insurance, I talked about that a little bit. We know we get that through our employers or we can go out there and purchase it on our own. But we have to have health insurance because we have to take cover before something happens. Homeowners insurance. We own a home. We need to have homeowner's insurance. And as I explained this morning in the earlier class, those of you who are homeowners will know that when it's your primary residence where I live, that insurance will cost me more than the one for my rental property. Why? Because where I live, that insurance covers the building and my belongings. And so my furniture, my everything is covered in that insurance. So the homeowner's insurance will cost more. The renter's insurance will cost less because what am I paying for to replace the building? And as they say, whatever is on the drywall, meaning the cabinets, etc. But I'm not paying for the renter's belongings. So if you're a renter, I encourage you, go out and get some renter's insurance. Because if there's any accidents, fires, whatever, you're not covered, your belongings are not covered. So you know the difference with homeowners and renter's insurance. Make sure you have insurance. Life insurance. Many years ago, I promoted whole life insurance. Should I say I didn't know better? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> now I promote term life insurance. I stand before you and tell you I don't have insurance. I had it at one point, but I don't have insurance because I'm self-insured. So why pay? So the reason I promote term life insurance now, you might get term life for 20 years while you're climbing the hill of life, just in case anything happens. You have term life insurance. You follow all the Dave Ramsey steps. You got your savings, you have everything. You're on your descent. You don't need life insurance. So I am self-insured. I don't have life insurance. But you need to have some type of insurance to cover your family in case anything happens. A little twist on this back in 2021 no back in 2001 sorry back in 2001 I lost an auntie and um, she's very she, she went to a cemetery a few minutes from here but it was a double plot and so the people from the funeral home let, from the cemetery let me know that when I passed she died in 01 when I passed they're not coming back to take away the headstone and so in this cemetery from 2001 is my name and my year of birth. And when she was first buried, I would wake up in the night and say, my Lord, when they start calling roll, Cora Green, where are you? <laughs> <You're> like, <"No." laughs> it freaked me out. I forgot about that now. My, so my name is still in that cemetery, in that burial ground, and my year of birth. So when I die, they're gonna put me there and they're gonna come and etch my date of death on there and it will be all over. So I don't have insurance, so that's a twist to that. But we have to have these things. We can't wait for them to happen. Then everybody starts running like a chicken without a head. So we have to have life insurance. Let me talk about documents. And I'll touch on three documents, only three documents. But what is a legal document? A legal document means a document affecting the legal rights of 
any person. Even the dog has like rights, the cat has rights, everybody in America has rights these days. So you want to protect your legal rights and you get some legal documents. For a document to be legal, it must also adhere to the jurisdiction of the laws of where you are. Can I share with the class this morning? Can I pick on divorce? New York is community property when it comes to divorce. Florida is equitable distribution. So we can't take New York divorce laws and apply them in Florida. It's not going to work. And so I picked on divorce, but laws for anything else, we cannot take the laws from California and bring them here. No, we got to use Florida laws. This is where we are. And so for a document to be legal, it must adhere to the laws where you are. And why do we need legal documents? To protect us and our interests, whatever we have. That's why we need to have legal documents. Legal remedy can be sought should there be a breach of the agreement. You can seek legal remedy. Legal documents also allow us to communicate with medical and financial institutions. Few people put appropriate legal documents in place, few people. And for those who put documents in place, they don't revise them fast enough. Legal documents will stop heartache, but it's also gonna stop headache when you have legal documents. I shared with the class this morning, I relocated from New York to Florida in 2000, and I brought all my legal documents from New York, even though I just said that this is a, a different jurisdiction. I did nothing about it back in 2000. And I parked them in the safe, and I just lived for the next 20 years. And then Mr. Kobe came along. And when Mr. Kobe came along a few years ago, I was so concerned, and that's when I revised my documents, thank God, to Florida. So I went out, I got me a lawyer, which you don't need, and sorry, I will explain that later. You don't need, but I got me a lawyer, and I revised all my documents. But think about the documents I had in 2000 before I came here. We have marriages, we have death, we have birth, we get assets, we buy houses, we sell houses, and so our lives change from time to time. So what's in that document yesterday might not work today. And this is why we have to revise our documents. And maybe I was leaving something for Soraya, and then she rubbed me wrong, and I don't wanna give it to her again, so I need to get her out of it, so we need to revise our documents from time to time. <laughs> I'm gonna share a serious joke with you. So my baby daughter, who's wants to have her own wish, she's not baby, she has, I have a grandchild, she has a grandchild, a child. But she's sometimes very fresh. And so she told my son, and my son tells me, this a few years ago, I'm not gonna tolerate mom. I'm putting her in the nursing home. I'm not gonna deal with her. And my son came, my son told me, mom, be careful, she says she's gonna put you in the nursing home. I said, what? I'm gonna sell all these houses, I'll get put the money in a little bag, and I'm gonna show up at the nursing home with the bag and say, how long can I live? And see what you all of you are gonna do when I'm gone. So we have to be mindful, so was I supposed to write her out of my will or what? So, <laughs> but I should, that's, that's serious, but I share that with you because that's why we have to revise the documents from time to time. Okay. Good legal documents are important for many different reasons. First, like I said, we don't put them together. My notes here is talking about the children, and Soraya is the one that always says this. What happened? God forbid if something happens to her and her husband simultaneously. Mm -hmm. She said she has a relative that she doesn't want her children going to. Mm -hmm. And she trusts the relative to do money management, but not to train up the children. So that's why she has to have documents to say what's gonna to happen to her children. Yeah. God forbid anything happens. Yeah. Have you ever thought about your children, your kids, your grandkids, whoever, who's gonna watch out for them? Do you have a document to say what's gonna happen with your kids? God forbid you don't wake up tomorrow morning. The Bible says we don't know when. We know it's coming, but we don't know when. So we gotta be ready. 
Without planning, guardianship is required and with the possibility of foster care. Do you want the courts to step in and say how your stuff needs to go? So you need to have documents. <clears throat> I'm gonna talk about the power of attorney and those are plenty big words, power of attorney. So when I say P-O-A, you know I'm referring to the power of attorney. I'm gonna talk about the living will and the last will and testament. Remember, there are two different things. When I say living will, remember, you do these things while you're alive. And then the last will and testament, you are here in God. So that's the difference with those two documents. We'll start off with the POA. There are three types of POAs. The first one is a general POA, just like I said general. The agent can perform almost any act as the principal. So I would be the principal. So I would be my agent. She can do anything, almost anything that I can do. She can open financial accounts. She can manage personal finance. This is a general POA. The principal, a general POA will terminate. It terminates when the principal becomes incapacitated. That's only a big word because to say I can't think anymore. Something's wrong with me, I've lost my faculties. <clears throat> so the doctor is saying she can't make decisions for herself. So when I become incapacitated, if I have a general POA, then Soraya can't use it anymore, it's, it terminates. I can also revoke. I can decide to change her and put someone else. So once I revoke it, she's no longer she has no, no longer power, and then if I die. Those are the three ways in which the general POA <clears throat> terminates. Then you have a special limited POA, just like I said. I probably just want her to sell my house, or my cars, or do whatever. So I will give her only special, specific powers. She can't open accounts, she can't manage money, she can only do specifically what that POA says. So we have general, we have specific, and then we have the third one is a durable, durable POA. This arrangement authorizes a person who you have chosen, so I chose her, so she will be my attorney in fact or my agent, interchangeable terms, and she will handle my healthcare decisions. Now here I have the living will. Don't get confused, which I'll talk about next. But a general, POA, I'm sorry, a durable POA can also have a living will built inside there. So you can have two separate documents, a durable POA and a living will, or you can have them all in one. It will help to make my decisions happen the way I want them to happen. And I'll share a quick story with you like I shared with the last class. When I was in New York, I worked on Wall Street, so prestige, so we get limos or whatever to drive us anywhere. My mom passed. Up in the Bronx, I worked in Manhattan, Wall Street. My sister was a nurse. We got the message. We're going to the hospital where mom passed. Well, I got zipped there. I got there before my sister. When I got there, mom was on the bed, and her chest was going up and down. Chest is going up and down. And here is this Wall Street broker on the floor, on the dirty hospital floor, crying, praying, asking God to bring my mom back and save my mom. My sister now, who's the nurse who understands how medicine works, I know nothing about medical terms. Mm -hmm. My sister walks in, my sister took one look at my mom, and my sister said to the water, get those things off, she's dead, she's gone, take those things off. Mom had gone home to eternity, but the respirator had her chest going back and forth. And I thought mom was still alive. So my document says, don't put no respirator on me. DNR, don't resuscitate me. Let me go home to glory. And these are the reasons we have to have these documents in place because it is the doctor's responsibility. This is how the law is written. They have to try to bring you back. They're required. They can't just let you go. So they're gonna put you on a respirator, or put you wherever they have to put you to try to bring you back. No, let me go home to glory. We need to have these things in place. That's the durable POA. Talk about a living will. It could be, like I said, inside of the durable POA, or it can be a separate. It's just a document, like I said, do not resuscitate. 
and whatever other wishes you have, you will put that in a living will so that your wishes can be honored when you can't think for yourself anymore. A healthcare proxy, we call this a, a HIPAA document, Health Insurance Portability Accountability Release, HIPAA, H-I-P-P-A, you've all heard about it. The reason I have a HIPAA document is because my husband is next of kin. Anything happens to me and my husband shows up at the hospital, the doctors will speak to my husband. The kids are adults. I got no babies. But when they show up at the hospital, the hospital legally cannot give them details of my health and what's happening. So they gotta depend on my husband. What if they're having a scuff and somebody's not talking to the next one? What goes on? So I have a HIPAA document that says, talk to this one, this one, the people's names are in there. Tell them what's going on with me so they can know. So it's wise to get that HIPAA document you have young adults or you might have a beloved sister who's going to show up at the hospital. They can't give her details because they can be in trouble. So you've got to have your HIPAA document to see who can get details. Who should you name as your agent? Your agent can be a competent adult who fully understands your desires and beliefs, who is completely trustworthy, and who will accept responsibility. You know, pick and survive it. That's why, for some reason, one of those might not be the character of the person she doesn't want taking care of her children. So you have to know who will be your agent. You can amend or revoke or whatever you need to do with the POA. I want to talk about a will. A will simply says where your stuff is going to go, and we'll have to write up after this. So the living will talks about your health, your desires. We call it just a will, but if you want to say the last will, that's the last thing you will write. You put all of your assets, who's getting what in that will. When you pass, nobody screams, everything is fine. The assets are distributed according to your will. God forbid I don't wake up tomorrow morning. And I take my houses, I take whatever, and I give it to my children. And my husband shows up. Oh no, I was a husband for 50 years, I didn't get anything. Probate. You heard of probate. So whenever somebody starts screaming and the fight starts, that will is going to go to probate. Nobody shouts, the will, everything is distributed. Somebody shouts, probate steps in. When probate steps in, both parties have to get a lawyer to go in front of the judge and the lawyers drag their feet because they're making money. So they're never in no hurry when mm -hmm. probate starts. I am not going to teach on a trust, <laughs> but that's one way of getting away from that is if you have a trust agreement. Because if you have a trust agreement that supersedes the will, but it's kind of costly to get a trust agreement. But the trust, you have a trustee. So when you die, the trustee is doing what you want in the trust. But I won't teach on a trust in this office, in this class. <clears throat> So your will can be probated, but you hope to God that everybody is happy with what you say, and uh, there's no probate in your will. That's the will will allow you to do. So my Adol will come and give you, first of all, she will explain this, and then she, Soraya has uh, a story about a relative of hers, which I have patterned off of. I have started working, I'm not completely finished yet, but I'm working on the things she's gonna tell you about. Come on up, Soraya. All right. <clears throat> we always like to share that I have been the family that benefited from somebody that many years ago did everything that we kind of telling you guys to do. I, my husband's mother, she actually was organized enough. She did everything that she was going to have Alzheimer's, which, you know, that's what ended up doing it. Uh, but she she never wanted us, like to, to, to be, for us to be a burden, you know, for her to be a burden to us as a family. So. When she actually was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and aphasia and everything happened way too fast, we brought her to live with us. It's different than, you know, Dr. Cara, she was the one that arranged everything because she wanted to go to a facility. That was her, her wishes. So she had everything, you know, she, she got a, a long-term care and, you know, she, she, she 
organize everything. When God time, if she needed, she had to go there. But me, I'm from Brazil. So I said, you know, Brazilians, we don't let our family go, go to these places. So I brought her home, but she had a little um, <clears throat> notepad where she had everything on it. Her account number, like, you know, where she had all her, uh, 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 sorry, all her investments and who was her lawyer, everything written in a little booklet, even, when she passes it away, who are the friends that she want us to call? Mm -hmm. So in a time where we were very sad and confused by bringing her home, we didn't have to worry about all those things. So that's why we always tell you guys, you know, the, the one of the reasons that also we give the binders is just like a little example where, you know, you guys can have all your documents in one place and, and discuss your wishes with people in your family. It's very, very important. We don't normally talk about those things. It's a boring thing. But as a family member that wants the best for you guys, for us was very hard because, you know, my my husband and his sister, they think very, very differently. And we've seen and we've been teaching here for a while. We always see a testimony of a family, the person that had a family member that, you know, that fought that weren't okay with the, the way that things were being divided. So those those documents, those wishes, the, the, the talk, it's so, so important for you guys to have with your family members. She mentioned, you know, with the, the will and it, the, the whole uh, different uh, documents here. I have like my sister-in-law that I don't want, I have small children that I don't want my sister-in-law taking care of my children. I love her to death but it's different, so she's my trust. She's the person that I trust to get rid, you know, take care of my finances, but my sister in Brazil is the one that I really want her to be with the children until they get better. So this is all written, they all know. We have those documents set in place and give each of them a copy of it because if something happens, right, I know everything's going to be taken care of. So this is the, the number one thing that I want to share with you guys. And then for the wheels, like we're saying here, it's it's important. Like she had a, a lawyer, and if you have a lot of things to go in your will, if you have different properties and people that you wanted to go different ways, we always recommend that you get a legal person, somebody that you know legally can read this and make sure to to do this for you. But if you have a simple you know, you just have like two children and it's all you have and 50 feet or something simple like that, you can go to some websites that are cheaper, you know, to have this done for you guys. We gave the two examples there. I do not recommend, again, if you need to do something bigger than just going to immediate family member because if there's like one thing that's wrong in there, it's not valid when you most need it, all right? Uh, so so just said you have a lot of assets. That's when you probably need yeah. to go. But if it's a few things, like the majority of us have, we could probably do it on our own. Yeah. I met with a member of the class um, about a week ago. She was she in a, she attends the early class. And while we're talking, I talked myself through, I suggested to her, and she came this morning, she did it. Uh, to get a three inch binder or something. She got a huge binder, but I didn't want a three inch. I just take the pages out of these binders and put it into a new binder, a, a thicker binder, and keep it for the rest of your life. And, and so she has a bigger binder, and she has, you know, she has, she's gonna add to it, to take out the green from the front and just make a bigger binder of it. I forgot to say this, just a second. We are going to uh, have in our app something that I, I you know, I, uh, my, I work with a, uh, life insurance and we kind of we put something together and we're gonna give you guys which is called financial personal inventory okay something that's like a guide where it's going to talk about all the documents that you should be putting you know in a separate place that you should uh, get together also there is a sum telling a little bit more about which what each document means and how you should proceed with that so like I said she had her her passwords and her phone numbers, you know, all in one place. So this financial personal inventory that we're gonna give to you guys, 
has all the items like we did with the spending plan, like just having the items you know separated there so you guys can also uh, follow that through and help you, you know to put those things together. Thank it's going to be an app. Okay? The round needs to come very quickly to yes. talk about graduation. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, um, Guys, before Dr. Green closes us out, just wanted to uh, to uh, give you guys a congratulations. So this is our last class, right? So uh, 10 weeks since you've been with us. As far as graduation requirements are, are, are concerned, uh, we set an expectation out of our 10 weeks of courses that uh, graduation would uh, consist of seven weeks of attendance plus acknowledgement of your two homework assignments. Um, what we're going to, what you'll end up uh, uh, seeing from us is I'm going to post a list and a message on the message board of the app of the roster of all the graduation um, uh, candidates. And so if you see your name on there and you haven't completed your, your assignments, we encourage you to complete those assignments or attend next semester so that you can make those things up, okay? 